that so far we've only colonized it. Mm -hmm. And that the colonizing mind is an inherently exploitative mind. Uh, we've not only, uh, as Wendell Berry said, we've, we, when we came across this continent cutting the forests and plowing the prairies, we've never known what we were doing because we've never known what we were undoing. Uh, he said somewhere else in the Unsettling of America, I think, that we came with vision, but not with sight. We came with visions of former places, but not the sight to see where we are. And it took New England, uh, it took New England 200 years to produce a Thoreau that would see New England for what it was, rather than through the eyes of the European. Um, it took Kentucky 200 years to produce a Wendell Berry. And uh, what I would hope that by the year 2090, when I hope some of my descendants are still around, uh, is that they will have been the true discoverers of America. Uh, people who know where they are. Um, we're still not native to this place yet. Uh, I would hope that um, I would hope that we could announce in 1992 the beginning of the age of discovery uh, of America. And that part of that's going to mean welcoming back the animals. Uh, when I was a kid in Kansas growing up, there were no deer around. And now I can take a deer every year. Uh, I could shoot a deer on our property every year, have a couple of times. Um, Ten years ago, there were no wild turkeys. Now there are 20 of them roosting in my woods at the south part of the property. Gary Snyder, the poet, talked about bringing back, uh, welcoming back the wild animals. There's now discussion about uh, a, a buffalo commons out on the high plains where the poppers at uh, Rutgers University, uh, they're saying that as the people <laughs> fail at farming, they move out, the government ought to buy the land and turn that into a buffalo commons. Well, I, I don't want to see the people have to leave, I think. But what this begins to suggest is, and a lot of the people in my area, of course, oppose what the poppers have to say. Mm -hmm. Our local congressman, Pat Roberts, said bad things about, uh, you know, these eastern peoples making this kind of a proposal. Uh, but what I think it does is enliven the imagination about our possibilities. And it could be that this is our last best chance to discover America before it's too late. And what I hope is that if we can keep enough of the wildness around, uh, that that discovery can continue. Now, there's a problem. Uh, one is that you know, in Catholicism, there's the saint. You go pray to the saint. You light a candle. You've got this sort of isolation of virtue there in that saint. Then people go in peace, and uh, they think, well, that's covered. Uh, in a certain sense, what we, have, we environmentalists have done is designate wilderness as a saint. Out there. Out there. Yeah, the isolation of virtue again, and then we spread atrazine all over the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Now... Either the whole thing is holy or it isn't. Mm -hmm. And that uh, we need to, in our welcoming of the animals back, in our preservation of wilderness, in our preservation of wildness, um, it will be important, probably the population will be very high in 2090, it will be very important to remember that wilderness is an artifact of civilization. Now, it used to not be that. And it will be important to see it as our source that gave rise to us, that we are now the protector of our own source. It will be important to, to have discovered that and to, to, have, to, to engage in the continuing discovery of the way the wor earth worked before the agricultural revolution, before the uh, industri uh, industrial revolution before the high energy epoch uh, and to acknowledge that there is nothing higher uh, than to live out our lives on this beautiful planet alone uh, and to um, 
you know, give up on this nonsense of space exploration. Um, you know, we're in space now, going at an incredible speed. If we just hang on, we might bump into something <laughs> that will be uh, somewhat interesting to look at. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think it'll be in what we'll find in that discovery, if we're able to get cracking soon enough, is that uh, George Wald, who the Nobel laureate for his work on the eye and was a uh, one of those that opposed the Vietnam War at Harvard. George Wald, uh, I won't get it exactly right, but he made the comment that we living things are the late outgrowth of the metabolism of our galaxy. The carbon which enters so importantly in our bodies was cooked in the remote past of a dying star. And from it, at lower temperatures, came nitrogen and oxygen, and these are indispensable elements were spewed out into space to form planets, and eventually we ourselves. The ancient seas set the pattern of ions in our blood. The ancient atmospheres molded our metabolism. And so we, earthlings, are made of stardust. And here we are. And uh, we're being matter's way of having gained self-recognition. Um, we're now able to, uh, I would hope that by 1990 we would see that what we need to do is to maintain the agricultural potential that would allow uh, countless children to sit on a grassy bank and watch a bee visit a shooting star, to watch the stardust at work. Um, it would seem to me that there's nothing higher than that. And not computers, not video games, not um, uh, anything that the shopping malls have to offer. That's just trash. Just trash. And that, um, that our source is the topsoil. We've come full circle. And I thank you, uh, Dr. Jackson, who's been called a welder, a farmhand, a ranch hand. You've been those things, a teacher, a professor, a associate professor, an agricultural biologist. You're also an inspiration, and thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure.